to you and welcome to you. Oh, that didn't work. That's okay. Good morning on this third Sunday of Easter. We continue our Easter journey, of course. Welcome to all of you online. So glad that you can pray with us. Uh, those of you in our overflow in our Sipple Hall, welcome to all of you. And of course, those of you here in our sanctuary, welcome on this third Sunday of Easter. So good to see so many uh, faces back who haven't been here in a while. We welcome you back as well. So let's see, at this time, please rise and say good morning to your neighbor. Those of you online, like and share the comments. Say good morning as we continue our Easter journey. Those of you in the sanctuary, those of you joining us online from St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Catholic Church, New Berlin, Wisconsin, the good old U.S. of A. Our staff is back in full force, and now we had a lot of communication this week from Pewaukee, Crivets, West Bend, a couple from Greenfield, Greendale, New Berlin, Milwaukee, Sheboygan, Oconomowoc, Marathon, Menominee Falls, Verona, Walwatosa, Almond, and Central Wisconsin. Racine, Beaver Darn, Westby, La Crosse, Gleason, Holcomb, Chippewa Falls, Franklin, Kohler. In the nation, Effingham, Illinois, Raleigh, North Carolina, Estero, Florida, Sebring, Florida, The Villages, Chattanooga, Tennessee, San Antonio, Texas, Fishers, Indiana, Franklin, Tennessee, Long Island, New York, Hill Country, Texas, Dallas, Pennsylvania, Alexandria, Virginia, Goodyear, Arizona, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and Cancun, Mexico. We welcome all of you. We center our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus is risen, alleluia, alleluia. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed, alleluia, alleluia. Fantastic. Hope you've read the scriptures, our way of preparing. The readings focus one one aspect is that we are witnesses. Think about the last week. What are you witness to? By your attitude, your actions, your words. Were we really witnesses of Christ? Or were, were, we, were we witnesses of our selfishness? If you could open your orders of worship to page 4. 
because during the Easter season, we renew our baptismal promises. So do you renounce sin as to live in the freedom as the children of God? I do. To renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you. I do. To renounce Satan, the author and the prince of sin. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and of earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. And we are proud to profess it in the name of Christ Jesus, our risen Lord. Amen. And now when you feel the baptismal water fall upon you, sign yourself with the cross. Think about giving witness to what we just said we believe in. Please join in our glory to God, the great hymn of praise on page five. to pray. Lord, eternal God, we gather again as church, disciples of Jesus, to lift up this time of praise and thanksgiving. Help us now truly to know your word, to hear it, that you would break open its meaning in our lives. And through the power of the Eucharist, we would become more faithful as your witnesses, that of the life and the example of Jesus, our Savior in Christ, who lives with you, Father and Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At the temple gate, Peter addressed the people. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And now, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now by this, we may be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not obey the commandments, is a liar. And in such a person, the truth does not exist. 
but whoever obeys his word. Truly, in this person, the love of God has reached perfection. And by this, we may be sure that we are in him. The word of the Lord. According to Luke. The two disciples told the eleven and their companions what happened on the road to Emmaus and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when Jesus had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were still disbelieving and wondering, Jesus said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave Jesus a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance And forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses 
to these things. The Gospel of our Lord. Jesus Christ. I'm gonna try to keep this part of my little meditation a little shorter because this time of year in our parish and in most parishes, we are asking for people to think about becoming part of our pastoral council. Every year we select three or four new people that serve for a three year term. And that's the time of year, that this is the time of year for that. In to do that, After I finish speaking, we're going to show a short video uh, talking about the Pastoral Council, perhaps to get more of you interested to be part of it. And the Pastoral Council is very important because I'm smart enough to know that I don't know everything, and I can't think of everything. That's why every pastor needs his council uh, to help with the vision of the parish, the future, and so on. So I want to talk about, start to tell you about talking about sin. I was told the story of a pastor up in uh, northern Wisconsin on a hot, humid Sunday morning. Uh, church had no air conditioning. People were sweating and wiping the, you know, fanning themselves. So the priest got up here and he said, I'm going to talk about sin. He said, personally, I'm against it. <laughs> and then he sat down. So I'm not going to do that. But start the second reading today talks about our sin and our sins. So when you hear that word, what do you, what's the first thing you think about? And probably the only thing we think about is our personal misconduct, the sins that we've been committed. And we've been taught that from our youth, so that's, that's just normal and natural. You know, maybe the lying or the stealing or committing adultery or hopefully not murder, but all of the individual actions that we have done that are wrong. And I'm not uh, downplaying that. We need to think about that. But I often wonder if that when we think about our individual sins, that we're missing the main point. And beyond committing those individual wrongdoings, I think there is a bigger sin, and that's not following the ways of God in our world. Think about what Jesus said. What are the great commandments? To love the Lord our God with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself. That's based, he said, everything's based on that. So when we think about sin or sins, do you think about that big commandment? Or do you think first and only of our own individual wrongdoing actions? That's what I believe Jesus came to show us. And I talked about this several weeks ago. Jesus came into the world, died on the cross to forgive our sins. Now, in popular opinion and many times popular theology, that portrays Jesus as a sacrificial victim to appease the wrath of God. In other words, that since the human race sinned, God is mad at us, and he demands a blood sacrifice to get over his anger. That's missing the whole point, because Jesus did not die on the cross to appease an angry God, because why? He's God. So he couldn't appease himself. But he died on the cross to show us God's love. That's the purpose of this cross. That's the epitome of unselfish love. And that's what most of us, I don't think, get. And most of us are unable to be that totally faithful servant of God's ways. So if you ever wonder, if you think about your past sins, and some people are burdened by them, uh, they can't forget about them. They can't believe God really forgives them. Hear it again. 
There in the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, that's a sign of God's love for you, even though we're not perfect. And I, I always talk, you parents, don't you love your kids even if they hurt you, even if they disappoint you? Well, God's our parent. We're his children, so God loves us. Hear it again. God loves you. And there's the sign of proof, the sacrifice of God on the cross to show us that love. Now, with that foundation, we think about Jesus coming to us. That's all of the stories after the resurrection. Do you know the one common theme about all those stories is they don't recognize Jesus. He's standing right there in front of them because he has changed. He isn't what they expect him to do and to be. We're the same way. If Jesus would appear to us, I don't think we would recognize him because he doesn't appear the way we think he should appear. And so we have all the stories of uh, the Emmaus breaking bread, and today we have the gospel, Jesus coming and uh, standing in their midst. They think he's a ghost. He looks so different. And by the way, did you catch that reference? He said, have you something here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. You know, that's the origin of the Catholic fish fry. <laughs> right there in Scripture. So my theory is Jesus appears to us all the time, but we don't recognize him. If you ever ask Jesus to appear to you, rather ask that, that he reveal to you his presence. And how does he present himself to us? We think that if God is, is uh, present to us, that everything will be great. You know, be smooth. We won't have any problems. I believe Jesus appears to us when things are not going great. It is in our sufferings and our sacrifices that God makes himself present. I think this last year with the pandemic, I think Jesus was trying to make himself present to us, only we didn't like it, of course, and we didn't recognize him. He's here. He's in all of the things because it's in our sufferings that we grow. And if we can see that to be the presence of a loving God, not a God against us, not a God that's angry, but a God who loves us, then we respond with greater witness. Again, you parents punish your children because you don't love them? I don't think so. You, you discipline them because you do love them, and that's how God loves us. Now, with that, we're called to give witness. Today's gospel, it's written that Christ is to suffer, rise from the dead, repentance and forgiveness of sins, to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations. That's what we're supposed to give witness to. And as I said at the beginning, to me it's always an examination of conscience. Think about the last week. All of your words, your actions, your attitude, did it reflect the mission and the message of Jesus? When we said something nasty to somebody else, when we got angry about traffic or waiting in line or whatever, and again, many times it's just our attitude, it didn't reflect Jesus. So we become witnesses of our own selfishness, our own self-centeredness. And the challenge is to be changed, be witnesses of Jesus. We've heard his word. In a few minutes, we're going to receive his body and blood. We are witnesses of his presence in the world through ourselves. And now, if the gods of computer technology will permit us, we'll watch the video about the Pastoral Council. Hello, everybody, and thank you for being here today. We are talking with some Pastoral Council members, and uh, it is discernment time, and, and we're looking for some new people to come on to Pastoral Council. And we just wanted to kind of use this time to introduce people to Pastoral Council and, and open people's hearts up to the call of this ministry. And so we'll start with you, Dave. Dave, what does Pastoral Council do? Can you, can you let people know? Actually, it's a question that the Pastoral Council has recently revisited 
and, and answered for ourselves. Uh, before we go into what the pastoral council does though, I'd like to touch on the word pastoral. In the context of the terms pastoral mission or pastoral council, it means related to spiritual care or guidance. So the purpose of the pastoral council is to work with a pastor or administrator of a parish in the continuous process of pastoral planning. That is our plan to work the pastoral mission of Jesus. This is where we look months and years ahead and help create plans to meet the pastoral needs of the members of our parish and community. The ultimate goal, of course, is to build a community of disciples. Um, and Bridget, what drew you to serve on pastoral council? This is your, your first year on pastoral council and what kind of drew you in? I had never even considered being on a pastoral council in the past. Then last year, Father Joe was talking about it at mass. He had recorded videos, he had information in the bulletin, and I started to think about it. And then I started to pray about it and speak with other people about it. And it, it started to grow into a bigger and bigger nudge that I couldn't shake. So I decided to join and um, be more a part of Seton. I value this parish and just wanted to participate more. After this past year, I can say that it's been a very positive, growing, learning experience for me. Yeah, I'm glad you said